Warning, the Duracell Cup Series data file you have attempted to access is out of date. Uploading current file now. It's a brand new car from stem to stern, and it's never been raced at these speeds. The next gen car is opportunity. Everything is different with the exception of like the seat, the steering wheel, and your helmet. Unknown creates excitement. <laughs> Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here for some nighttime short track racing at the debuting I-69 Interstate 69 Speedway here in Port Huron, Michigan, as it plays host to race number 11 of season seven of the SRA Duracell Next Gen Cup Series. Originally was supposed to be us coming back to the Dodge Motordrome for what would have been half mile short track action. Unfortunately, some technical difficulties got in the way and so Interstate 69 was tabbed as the new replacement here for tonight's event. 75 laps of action here tonight. This racetrack about a mile in length, so around the same distance as uh, Dover International, if you will. Not nearly the kind of banking and a lot more space to be able to race here at this particular short track, but should be a good one. Second short track on the season. Of course, the first one was the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway where a Ford went to victory lane in Will Goss, and a Ford starts on the pole here tonight, that being Chris Dollerton. If you didn't tune in last night, we had some fireworks. It was exciting. The closing stages of our Fast 10, the final round of qualifying, was looking like we were going to get ourselves a repeat pole sitter. Ryan Brommer, Nathan Norman, Laura Chung, you see lining up here, second, third, and fourth, all former pole sitters on the season. But at the very last minute, Chris Dollerton able to clock in the fastest lap time, and it is the first poll of the season, not only for him, but for the team at Blue Oval Automotive. So Dollerton, the inaugural champion from season one, will be leading us to the green. He'll be alongside of Ryan Brommer. Uh, both of these drivers coming off entirely different races from last week. At Coke Zero Super Speedway, Dollerton ran very well, finished up inside of the top 10, gained seven spots in the standings to 21st in points. It was actually Dollerton's first top 10 on the season also. Ryan Brommer, on the other hand, he had a pit road mix-up with Dylan Pote, finished multiple laps down, technically out of the race, did not finish the race under power, and he dropped eight spots in the standings from 27th to 35th in overall points so both of these drivers looking to get a good run here tonight for entirely different reasons behind them in row two almost kind of the the same song second verse you've got uh, nathan ormond and laura chung now nathan ormond he gained a spot in the points last week but he's 39th in overall points laura chung though she tanked after a bad performance dropped six spots standings to 28th and then the top five completed there by Keith Batson. He's looking to get that one position better than where he finished last week. He was the runner-up finisher to Casey Hoyt in the Coke Zero Super Speedway race. Speaking of Casey Hoyt, uh, Casey Hoyt will be starting pretty deep in the field here today, coming off his second victory as a rookie, so second career win. Comes in the points leader, nine points over Rob Evans, who qualified up inside the Fast 10, will roll off the grid from seventh. So when the green flag drops, Evans, by live point standings, will be the new points leader. But don't count out Casey Hoyt. Hoyt, the only other repeat winner, with the exception of our Daytona 500 winner, Matthew Rodriguez. So the two drivers that have gone to victory lane multiple times this season, one's a rookie and one's a non-charter driver. So I've, I've mentioned this before. This season has been anything but predictable. And uh, that, has, that has clearly been the case so far 
uh, you look down the list of the drivers that have gone to victory lane and the only, and I, and I don't mean this in a negative term, but the only normals for the seasoned veterans, if you will, that have gone to victory lane so far that aren't a rookie, that aren't in a non-charter capacity have been Levi McIntyre, Dylan Young, and Zachary Fitzwater. That's been it. All the others have been non-charter drivers or rookie drivers or both in the case of Kyler Sustrade. So we'll see if we get a little bit more net, more net, a little bit more, more normality. Easy for me to say. Wow. Would have taken me two years to get that sentence out, and by then the race would have been over. Uh, or if we'll end up seeing some more unpredictability here this evening. It's a brand new debuting racetrack, so that's some unpredictability right there. But let's go down trackside. Let's get those most famous words in motorsports, and let's get ready to go nighttime racing here at Interstate 69. Gentlemen, start your engine! Get our rhythm. They're ready to rock and roll today. It's a long race. There will be a lot of pit stops. So just go out there, do what you got to do. No mistakes. That's the big thing today. Just no mistakes. No mistakes indeed. Pit Road is going to probably play a factor into the outcome of this race. These drivers cannot make it the entire 75 lap distance. Projected pit stop will have to take place somewhere between lap 35 to 40, somewhere around the halfway point. Could be the money stop if it's under green. Could make strategy very interesting if it's around a caution period. So you're starting light up on the right side of your screen. And the Toyota TRD pace car makes the left-hand turn to pit road. Well, what type of racing will we see here tonight at Interstate 69 Speedway? It's ready to play its part, potentially into the outcome of the playoffs, maybe even the champion itself. Green flag is in the air, and Dollarton will lead them into turn number one. Ryan Brommer able to floor it on the top side out of turn two. He'll swing around and take the race lead. Darlington maybe a little loose there on the inside line. Had to check up off of turn two. And lap one will go to the Twix Toyota Camry out of Auto Junction Racing. Laura Chung looked like she wanted to go around the outside as well for second place. Darlington though, getting a little bit of heat in the tires. Found the grip there on the inside of three and four. He'll slot into second place. Chung into third. Fourth place going to go to Caleb Fogler as Nathan Orman still having some problems down on that inside line. Now he's going to get taken three wide. His teammate on the inside, Michael Norman. Jessica Shelton up on the top side. Tight there off of turn number two. With Keith Batson looking on in the 39. I mentioned the, tra the fact that this racetrack very wide. You can see it there visibly. You could hold them three, four wide if necessary. But then it narrows up off the corner, off of two and off of four onto the front and back straightaways. Teammates. This is for third as Dollarton. Slipped up. Loses second to Laura Chung. Caleb Fogler. He's going to move on by for the third position. Couple of teammates, couple of former champions there. Fogler from season five and... Dollarton from season one. Well, you want to know how crazy it is here at this particular racetrack? How wide it can hold them? Look here towards the rear of the field. Ooh, three wide now, four wide. Little contact there with Quentin Moore and Levi McIntyre, LaPlante and Jesse Turner in that four wide situation. A lot of options, a lot of room to race, but as I mentioned, it really accordions up on corner exit. A little further up ahead, there's two-time winner Matthew Rodriguez. Dustin Bolin, three-time winner from last season. Top 10 in points for him. There's Fitzwater needs points here tonight to get back in the top 30 in the standings for his mid-Ohio win to count at least at this point towards a wild card spot. Way up on the top side there, right side of your screen was your points leader Casey Hoyt dropping towards the back. Things a little bit more settled out further towards the front you get. Was double wide, now three wide. Matt McIntyre, man, look at that car. Did you see him back and forth? If he had yellow gloves, you would have seen them going back and forth trying to catch that thing. Oh, man, he nearly just ran into the left rear quarter panel of Reese Banks. Just going on in just inside the top 20 there with Gum, McIntyre, Sanford, Banks, Gunther all in this vicinity. Connor Breton swinging around his teammate Benjamin Miles to pick up the 13th position. R.J. Bishop is 
drifted back to 12th after starting 9th. Rob Evans right now, currently the points leader, ninth in the running order. Casey Hoyt has drifted back to 33rd. Those two were separated by nine points, Hoyt over Evans. So Evans looking to take the points lead back once again, heading into Darlington. Michael Norman started this race from 10th. He is now up to sixth. Now looking to make a move on Jessica Shelton to crack into the top five is at the front. We've had a lead change. Ryan Brommer was out in front for six laps. Laura Chung has led the last two. And now will lead her third lap. Actually, correction, she led the last three. Now will lead her fourth lap. Scoring hadn't updated yet. AJR right now 1-2 with Boa right behind them in third and fourth. So a couple of duos out of their respective organizations. Some Toyotas leading some Fords. And then the Project Dodge Intrepid of Jessica Shelton holding down the final spot of the top five. And she's currently under pressure from a couple of Michael Norman Motorsports cars and Michael Norman and Nathan Ormond. Right now you got five Fords up here inside of the top 10, one Dodge. Two Chevrolets and two lone Toyotas leading the field. Maybe not for long. Caleb Fogler to the inside of Ryan Brommer, and he will take the second position. Fogler got his first career win late last season. Of course, a former champion, as we mentioned, back in season five when he was with S3 Motorsports in the uh, three drivers per car season. Won the championship with Kyle Matthews and Stephen Paul with the third. Remember, Kyle Matthews in SP3 got victories that year. Fogler did not. He was consistent, but he didn't get a win. His first career win was last year. His first full-time season with Blue Oval Automotive, a team that has garnered a champion in their own right, that being Jordan Lopez back in season four. Fogler 29th in points, coming off that good run last week. And trying to see if maybe he can win his way into a playoff berth as a single driver. Romers drifted back to third. Chris Dollerton trying to reel him in. Battle closes up for fifth. Michael Norman peeking his nose out there, trying to get maybe a little clean air to the nose in preparation for turn one. Closed up there on the back bumper of Shelton through one and two. Keeps about the same distance. May have had to lift a little early there for turn three. Jessica Shelton mentioned this yesterday in qualifying one of four drivers on the year that is still searching for their first top 10 finish. Dollerton got his first last week. But Jessica Shelton Along with Daniel Voiles and a couple of drivers out of Joanna Abbott Motorsports, Joshua Osborne and Quentin Moore still have a zero in the top 10 statistic. Right now, Shelton, the highest running of those. Next highest would be Voiles, who's back in the 15th position. Joshua Osborne's in 29th, and Quentin Moore right now all the way back in 35th. Fogler is closing up on Laura Chung for the race lead. That last time by Chung at a 23-6-9-0 and Fogler at a 6-1-5, about 8 hundredths quicker. Ryan Brommer is starting to close back up on the top two as well, so don't count him out. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget you know, the couple of struggling years that Ryan Brommer has had after he signed on to Auto Junction Racing, that Ryan Brommer almost ended up winning a championship back in Season 2. He was the runner-up finisher to the eventual champion, Ryan Acosta. So it's not like Ryan Brommer has just been here in the Duracell Cup Series filling in a seat. He's been a contender for the championship. As are we gonna have pit stops there? Or was that just an unusual line for Laura Chung? I guess I guess it was an unusual line. 
He kind of diamond the corner there while Caleb Fogler ran a little bit higher. You can see the 28 is searching, trying to find some way to probably get clean air to the nose, allow him to rotate through the center, get back to the throttle sooner, and get some good momentum onto the straightaways here in his attempt to take the lead away from Laura Chung. As he's doing that, might be checking him up a little bit, and that's allowing Ryan Brommer to close up, make it a three-car fight for the race lead. Let's check a little bit further back in the field here. Some good battling here outside of the top ten. R.J. Bishop trying to hold off the Northeast Motorsports Brigade of Benjamin Miles and Connor Breton. It's a good run right now for Connor. Came into this one uh, one point below the 30th and Stanley's cut line. Of course, a couple weeks removed from his first career win at Texas Motor Speedway. A lot for Breton to have to live up to with the entry that he's in. That was the, the only car last year that really had anything positive to brag about for Northeast Motorsports when Jack Dunard, a rookie then as well, went to victory lane at Phoenix. End up advancing his way up through the playoffs into the final four to compete for the championship. They didn't re-sign him. They put Connor Breton in the car. Breton started out the year really struggling, which is why he's down where he is in the point standings despite the victory at Texas. But where he's positioned right now could very well be back up inside the top 30 and into a wild card spot going into another difficult track next week at Darlington. Dylan Poteet. New look for that number 31, the Mountain Dew colors on his Chevrolet at a Fortnite Squad Racing, right now 15th. Of course, Dylan, uh, kind of almost kind of the same situation as a few other drivers last week. Anthony McCurry uh, was running really well in the Coke Zero SS race, was consistently up inside of the top five, if not top 10. But D Dylan Pote had a pit road incident with Ryan Brommer. Ended up spending a couple of extra laps on pit road, finished the race off the lead lap as a result and drop down to ninth in the point standings. In danger of dropping out of the top 10. Daniel Boyles in the 26, another driver trying to get his first top 10 on the year. Got a pole last week. Didn't translate to a good finishing result for him though. Boyles currently 36th in overall points, fourth the last of all the drivers that have taken every green flag so far this season. There's a former champion in Carson Gum, 17th right now. The other Chevrolet on the Chevrolet half side of Fortnite Squad Racing. Carson, 24th in points coming into this one. And then one of the Mazdas, also out of the Fortnite Squad Racing stable, right behind him, and Nick Gunther, four-time winner from last season. There's Matt Haas. Matt Haas last year, very consistent, was up battling for the points lead throughout almost the entirety of the regular season. Didn't get a victory until the playoffs at Chatham. So he wasn't able to battle for the championship. We've seen the success out of the other side of the Haas Racing Stables with Matthew Rodriguez getting victories at Daytona and Indianapolis. We're hoping that translates over here to the chartered ride of Matt Haas. Matt's going to have a different teammate next week. Matthew Rodriguez will be... Moving over to the 17 for Bishop Family Racing, attempting to qualify for the race at Darlington, while the number 80 will be piloted by Benny Watson. Former winner at Darlington, got his first career win at Darlington Raceway. Got a couple of uh, non-charter drivers attempting to qualify next week. We're not going to see the Duracell Light Series drivers until the start of the second half of the regular season for the Cup Series drivers, so a few of them. The lights drivers, that is, going to be attempting to qualify for Darlington next week. Amongst them, Benny Watson and Jack Mitchell, another driver that got his first career win at that racetrack. Well, Caleb Fogler putting the pressure on Laura Chung. He keeps getting some good rolls through the center of the corner. Seems like he stalls out, though, when he exits out of the corner. The momentum that appears to be there stalls out. Right there, you saw, definitely had to lift going into turn one. And Ryan Brommer is just kind of riding there, waiting for the 28 to make a mistake to get back up to second position. It's like as the run goes on, the tires wearing down, drivers are 
having difficulty getting back to the throttle off of corner exit, especially on that inside line. So Laura Chung has got the advantage of running whatever line she wants and is forcing Caleb Fogler to do something different. But Pitt Road, we might be a couple laps away from it coming into play here as we've run the first 34 laps now under green flag conditions. And that has not been good news for a number of drivers that did not qualify all that well yesterday. A lot of big names running at the tail end of the field currently. As a matter of fact, a number of them are only about seven or eight seconds ahead of the race leader. Levi McIntyre, James Qualls, Jose Mills, Cole Deaver, Jesse Turner, Ryan Butcher, Austin LaPlante, some big names. And I mentioned this last night in qualifying. A lot of drivers that are running well in the point standings did not qualify well. And subsequently, they are at the rear of the field here in the race. When you look outside of the top 30 and you've got drivers like Will Goss, Dylan Young, Casey Hoyt, Destin Bolin, Austin LaPlante, Jesse Turner, Levi McIntyre, James Qualls. These are all drivers I just listed off right there that came into this race running no worse than 13th in overall points. And they're not even inside the top 30 in the running order right now. So there could be a massive shift in positioning as far as the standings are concerned heading into Darlington if things do not change in the second half of this race. Looking at lap times here as well, definitely the undercut I feel could be the way to go in terms of pit strategy here if we do get this pit stop under green flag conditions because Laura Chung last time by just ran a second and two tenths slower than her fastest lap. Her fastest lap almost a 23 flat and that time by, well actually how about this time by, it was a 24-3. So there you go, that's 1.3 seconds difference. 1.2 seconds difference with Caleb Fogler. 1.2 seconds difference with Ryan Brommer. So the tires have definitely fallen off. The lap times have fallen off. That's over a second to be gained on fresh tires if you pull the undercut strategy. And I think Fogler just did it. From the second position, I love this call out of the 28. Now he's going to hope that this thing remains green so that way everything cycles around. Another driver I just saw was on pit road. Couldn't tell who it was, but I like this call. Nathan Ormond coming in in the 23. The sooner you're on pit road, yeah, you run the risk. A caution could trap you off the lead lap, but at the same time, you're gaining over a second in lap time to the rest of the field. Ryan Brommer's in this time from... The newly inherited second place, Michael Norman, is on pit road. I think I just saw R.J. Bishop has come in. Rob Evans, a number of others behind them. Kyle Matthews, Benjamin Miles, Nick Gunther, Connor Breton, Cody Lamas, Dylan Young. I think I might have seen the three of Cole Deaver. Here comes Chris Dalerton in. Jessica Shelton right behind him with Keith Batts. And we're still waiting for the 77 of Laura Chung to pit. She's still staying out. Oh, never mind. Nope, she isn't. Never mind. She was way ahead of those drivers. Now you got the flip side. Now you got the drivers that are running long, hoping maybe a caution comes out to gain them track position and or that they'll have fresher tires for the latter half of this race to be able to work their way up. Matt McIntyre and Reese Banks amongst those coming in now, along with Charles Sanford, Matt Haas. In the eight, I think, if he crosses the line. I don't know if he did cross the line, but he, uh... Well, we got a couple of cars still on pit road. We'll follow up on that in a moment. But I think Matt Haas should end up leading that lap, but Laura Chung is still on pit lane. As was Keith Batson. Not sure what's going on there. Kyle Matthews, Matt Haas still on pit road. Did they get pit road speeding penalties? I mentioned this is the first time these drivers have been to this racetrack. And they may be held in their pit stalls. Ryan Brommer just cycled up to second. Who is cycled to the lead? It is Caleb Fogler. So that strategy call was apparently the right one. Still waiting for Laura Chung to come off of pit road. Chris Dollerton. 
Not sure all what's going on there. We'll try and get an update on if it is a pit road speeding penalty for those drivers. But something more into towards, you guys will be seeing what it was courtesy of the Nature Split Cam, but Caleb Fogler is the race leader in the 28. And it'll be 30 laps to go this next time by. And Nathan Orbit has just come to pit road and made the left-hand turn to the garage area, apparently. They're diagnosing an engine problem for the 23 car, and he was another one, like Fogler, that was one of the first on to pit road. It's a tough break there for Nathan Ormond. Looks like he's going to probably finish dead last year tonight. No other driver prior has retired out of the race. Now Caleb Fogler, the race leader, has over 2.3 seconds back to Ryan Brommer, but he does have traffic he's dealing with here, including Casey Hoyt, who's on the tail end of the lead lap right now in the 21st position. Trying to keep himself there. Mitchell Collins just up ahead as well in the 33. Brommer has a couple of cars between himself and Caleb Fogler. Cole Deaver and Anthony McCrory in 22nd and 23rd right now. First car is one lap down. Brommer going to have to try and make some quick work of these guys to get up there to the 28 to battle potentially, not only for the race lead, but more than likely the race win. More lap cars there before you get back to the third place machine, which is Michael Norman. He, your last time by was nine seconds behind the leaders. And then Jessica Shelton right now is in the fourth position. There she is, dealing with the lap machine of Connor Breton. And Daniel Voyles right now is the completion of the top five. So there's two drivers right there that we were talking about need to score their first top tens in Shelton and Voyles, and right now they're inside of the top five. Joshua Osborne's actually in the 10th position, so the only driver left, if the positions finish exactly where they are right now, to get a top 10 here this season would be Quentin Moore. And Quentin's actually running right now in the 15th position. So I'm not 100% certain all of the drivers that ended up getting penalized, but I have been told that Number of drivers were too fast on entry. They were held after their pit stop, released back onto the racetrack. We've got currently 21 of them on the lead lap and 40 of them running. James Qualls, I'm just being told, has retired out of the race. Engine problem for the 70. So Nathan Norman and James Qualls here right in the middle of green flag pit stops. So just after pit stops with engine problems, being told an engine valve, the specified issue for the 23, and an engine header for the 70. Ormond had a great qualifying effort here tonight, and he will have nothing to show for it. James Qualls came into this race fourth in overall points, 33 points out of the points lead. And he's going to suffer a DNF. His finishing, average finishing positions this season has been incredible. Sub 15th. 14.4 is average finishing position, but that will decrease after the DNF tonight. It looks like the drivers that may have gotten hit with the speeding penalties, at least that we know confirmed, would include Laura Chung, Chris Dollerton. Joshua Osborne and Kyle Matthews. Jury is kind of out on some of the other ones who were running towards the rear of the field and may have been just lapped here under these green flag conditions. I mean, remember Caleb Fogler came in the soonest of everybody, so he would have leapfrogged the entire field. Not certain if any others end up getting black flag penalties or not. Caleb Fogler right now trying to close out the deal. He's got 1.9 seconds between himself and Ryan Brommer now. That gap has dwindled a bit. Brommer trying to close in, but he's still got McCurry and Deaver between himself and the 28. Still, though, a number of drivers running up inside of the top five, top ten, going to have really good points nights. As things currently are positioned, Fogler, Brommer, Shelton, Voiles. Really needing the runs that they've got right now up inside of the top 10. 
How about Matthew Rodriguez? I just noticed that the two-time winner is up here inside of the top 10, one week removed from failing to qualify at Coke Zero Super Speedway. Dropped out of the top 10 to 12th in overall points. Might move back up inside the top 10. As he's currently running in the ninth position, trying to close up there on the lap machine of Rob Evans. Evans right now is in 36th. Remember we were talking about at the drop of the green flag, Evans up inside the top 10, Casey Hoyt at the rear of the field. Evans was going to be the new points leader. Well, the tables have completely flipped. Evans is 36th. He is the last car one lap down. And Casey Hoyt is on the tail end lead lap in 20th. So it went from almost a negative 25, 30 position deficit for Casey Hoyt to now a plus 15. Carson Gum, Charles Sanford, RJ Bishop. This is a three-way battle for sixth. Closing in on 15 laps to go. Carson Gum. 24th in points, Charles Sanford 27th, and RJ Bishop 20th, so all of these drivers can move up into the top 20, maybe top 15 for RJ Bishop, if he's able to close out the deal, good run here for Charles Sanford, we were you know, kind of wondering if he entered into the typical championship slump, where we see a driver like win the championship one year, and the following year they struggle to stay up inside the top 30 in points. Well, Charles was in that category last week, though. Decent outing, up to 27th in points, and looks like he will continue to climb if he can stay in the top 10 in this one. Boyles right now by himself in the fifth position. Got about seven, eight car lengths up to Jessica Shelton in the fourth spot. This will be the first top five on the season for that Project Dodge out of S3 Motorsports. First top 10 will be documented as well. Michael Norman trying to make the pass here on Dylan Young. Trying to get up there to the top two, but he's got over nine seconds before he'd even get up there to Ryan Brommer. So outside of a caution coming out, looks like Michael is destined to finish the final spot on the podium. See all these cars here between himself and Brommer. Brommer trying to get around Cole Deaver. Anthony McCurry made a pass on Deaver, move him up to 21st. Brommer will now make the pass on Deaver as well. Gap about 1.4 seconds as Fogler dealing with traffic. Saw him have to bail out of the throttle right there off a of turn two. Brommer is closing. He's in the same camera shot now. This race is not over yet. This time by, 10 laps to go. 10 miles remaining. And Brommer has a shot. Kyler Sustre. Just ahead of Caleb Vogler here. Right now, last car on the lead lap in 20th place, trying to make his way back up in the top 30 in points for his Las Vegas win to count towards a potential wild card spot. Now, Vogler is between a rock and a hard place here. He doesn't want to race it up with these cars, but at the same time, if he doesn't get around them, Ryan Brommer is closing. Nice rotation through the center there for Caleb Fogler, patient to make the pass on Kyler Sustre. And he will move on by and put another now lap machine between himself and Ryan Brommer. Brommer yet to get up there to Anthony McCrory and then he would have to deal with the now lapped Kyler Sustre. Fogler just continuing to increase his chances of picking up what would be his second career checkered flag, first of the regular season. And potentially still a long season to go, but maybe, just maybe, his first playoff berth as a single driver rather than as a team driver made the playoffs with S3 Motorsports two seasons ago. Well, right now, the best friend for Caleb Fogler are these lap times ticking away. This next time by will be at six laps remaining. If this track comes back in Season 8, you know the first thing every driver is going to have circled as a priority is make sure that you know how to get onto pit road without getting penalized. That cost Laura Chung, who led a race-high 
35 laps here tonight. A chance at winning this race. Chris Dollerton, who was up there in the top five before he got hit with the penalty. Kyle Matthews was just outside of the top 10. Those drivers are going to finish down in the very bottom of the finishing results of drivers still out on the racetrack. I said Pit Road was going to play a factor. Didn't know how much of a factor. It's the first time these drivers have taken Interstate 69 Speedway. A lot of learning had to take place, and unfortunately some of them got burned trying to maybe overstep the boundary a little too much. Caleb Fogler will not get the bonus point for most laps led. That will go to Laura Chung. Caleb Fogler does not have enough laps remaining to be able to grab that bonus point, though if he does close out the deal, he'll have led 33 laps tonight, two laps shy of the 35 led by Laura Chung. Don't think he'll care about that bonus point, though. As long as he's able to get that checkered flag. Gap still remains about 1.4 seconds. It has not changed the last five, six laps between himself and Ryan Brommer. Some space for Fogler to work with. About three car lengths up to Casey Hoyt. So he can kind of run his own pace. He's got two lap machines that are up to speed between himself and Ryan Brommer. And more importantly, he's only got two more miles to traverse. Two laps to go for the Busch Gardens Ford Mustang. Trying to complete the sweep for Blue Oval Automotive. Chris Dollerton nabbed the pole for this evening's race. And Caleb Fogler is looking to close it out with the checkered flag. Caleb Fogler, as mentioned, jumped up from 35th to 29th in points after a great run last week at Coke Zero Super Speedway. White flag is in the air. He will undoubtedly be in a wild card position heading into Darlington, but I think he'll be looking for a lot more than that. Been a very consistent last couple of weeks for this 28 car that came alive near the close of last season. Caleb Fogler moves up there to the outside line. Not going to deal with any traffic ahead of him. And Caleb Fogler, second career win. First of season seven here at the debuting Interstate 69 Speedway in Port Huron, Michigan. Caleb Fogler hoping the next time that he enters into the state boundaries of Michigan, it'll be to clinch a championship. Of course, Michigan International, the championship venue last season and this season in the Next Gen Cup Series. Second career win for the former champion. And a big one here tonight that could put him in the playoffs here in Season 7. Second straight victory that a Ford finds victory circle. And maybe a little bit of breathing space for Caleb Fogler and this 28 team that started out the year not all that well. But they have certainly found their stride in the last couple of weeks. Standings should be official. And we will take a look here at the finishing results. Ryan Brommer, that'll be his best finish on the season. As he'll bring it home in second place. Michael Norman going to complete the podium there in third. Uh, Michael has been uh, free-falling through the point standings after he was up inside the top 10. He was 25th in points coming into this one. So finally stops the skidding here tonight. Jessica Shelton, best finish on the season for her, the best finish for that Project Dodge. She'll nab her first top 10 of the season here tonight. Same for Daniel Voiles, his first top 10 of the season, as he'll do it with a top 5 and 5th. Carson Gum's going to bring it home in 6th. Charles Sanford there in 7th, so a couple of former champions up inside the second half of the top 10. Matthew Rodriguez, the two-time winner, eighth place. Is he back up inside the top 10 in points? We'll have to wait and see. R.J. Bishop brings it home ninth. And Dylan Poteet going to bring it home in the 10th position. Nick Gunther, another good run for that Mazda. As he's going to be 11th. Benjamin Miles in 12th. Quentin Moore will be 13th. Cody Lamas and Keith Batson will complete the top 15. 19 cars finished on the lead lap with Ryan Butcher, Zachary Fitzwater, Mitchell Collins, and Casey Hoyt being the last of those. Pit road and pit road strategy in the middle of this race end up putting multiple drivers one or more laps down. Kyler Sustrick completed the top 20, followed by McCurry, Deaver, Goss, Mills, and Turner, the top 25. Rob Evans, second in points, was the last driver one lap down in 36th. 
two drivers two laps down and Osborne actually three drivers I should say Osborne Chung and Dollarton um, we know that they ended up getting black flags for too fast on pit road entry same for Kyle Matthews to finish three laps down and then James Qualls and Nathan Ormond with mechanical problems about midway through the race will finish in 41st and 42nd position 75 green flag laps here tonight. No caution to save the pit road mistakes and Caleb Fogler's team executed. I go all the way back to the call to come to pit road a couple laps before everybody else. Undercut pit strategy, gaining about a second, almost a second and a half on those fresh tires, I think is what helped Caleb Fogler be able to win this race. Had a strong car, but played the strategy to gain him even more track position en route to that victory. So well done to that team, Caleb Fogler becomes the ninth, yeah, ninth different winner on the season. And uh, well done to him. We'll see where this positions him in the point stand. So hope you guys enjoyed tonight's race here from Interstate 69 Speedway. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We show you full fish results. We'll be showing you your point standings here right now. And these are the point standings heading into next week at another difficult racetrack. It's got more nicknames I think, than any other racetrack out there. The track to obtain, the Lady in Black. It's Darlington Raceway as we draw closer to the All-Star Race break. But until then, I've been Seth Cole. Thanks for tuning in here tonight. And you can watch another broadcast courtesy of NSRA TV, Offline Racing at its best.